So ever since Congress passed Secured Act 2.0, it's becoming clear that the government wants you to make 401k, 403b, or TSP as your core retirement account, especially for the late Gen Xers, Millennials, Gen Zers, and beyond. But what's troubling is that nearly two thirds of Americans are still confused about how 401k works. And that's probably due to the fact that we were raised by baby boomers who worked their whole lives to get their work pensions and social security pensions. And this is not the baby boomers fault, but this is a failure of our education system. Every senior in high school should be learning about the basics of filing taxes, paying bills, saving money and investing in their retirement. Not every high school graduate is going to college. So why are we not preparing our 18 year olds before they move out and live on their own? If every school and parent were doing that, I wouldn't be in this profession, right? And in this video, I want to go over the information you need in order to choose your correct 401k investment funds. I will leave chapters in this video so you can skip to wherever you need to help you and your financial needs. The very first step you need to know is actually understanding how a 401k works. From 2017 to 2021, I maxed out my 401k every year for those five years before I left my private sector job at the end of 2021, my 401k, including my employer match, grew from zero to over $200,000 due to four reasons. One, I maxed out my 401k contribution every year. Two, I got my employer match every time I made a contribution. And this is something you wanna watch out for with some employers because if you max out too soon, let's say like in October, then you might not get the rest of the employer match in November and December. And three, I researched my retirement funds and knew exactly where every dollar was being invested in my 401k. And four, I got lucky during the bull market. And I'm not gonna pretend to tell you that I knew how the market was gonna perform because I didn't. And let me show you my 401k spreadsheet here. This tab is my 401k from 2017 to 2021. I wrote everything down because I'm a, I'm a nerd, right? And I don't have my 401k anymore because I rolled it over to my IRA. But anyway, every year starting in 2017, I maxed out my 401k contribution by investing $18,000, $18,500, $19,000, and then $19,500 in 2021. The total personal contribution during those five years was $94,500 in after-tax dollars. The other tab is the traditional portion of my 401k, which is all of my employer matches. And they contributed 3% of my salary when I contributed 6% of my salary. And the last year I was there, they contributed 4% of my salary when I contributed 8% of my salary. I never left free money on the table. By the time I left the private sector, I had over $45,000 just from the employer contribution and the earnings that accrued. The reason why I'm showing you these charts now is that I read a lot of the comments in my previous video about the new 401k perks and rules you should know in 2023, linked in the description below, which was the most viewed video I got on this channel. So thank you all so much for watching that. And I have many people commenting that the government will probably take our 401ks away, like social security. Whether we'll have social security by the time I retire is still questionable, but the 401k is in your name, managed by a broker like Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab, and invested by you. In your 401k, you have the option to invest aggressively, moderately, or conservatively. The investment options may be limited, but there are some workarounds that I will show you later on in this video. And after you leave your job, you have the ability to move it to your individual retirement account or IRA and manage it yourself. I did exactly that when I left my private sector job. A work pension, on the other hand, is completely managed by someone else and you have no control over it. There's usually a brokerage firm or a team of financial advisors who manage the pension fund for you. And some people said in the comment section that a pension is still better than a 401k and I have to completely disagree with you by showing you my 17% annualized return between 2017 and 2021. And obviously that's not always gonna be the case in the future. My pension in the same private sector I work for grew by 2% annually, barely beating the annual inflation rate. The pension stays with your employer even after you leave your job. So you have to keep track of it. And if it's not insured by, and the company goes bankrupt, 
you could lose the pension plan. So no, unless you commit a serious crime, the government cannot garnish or take away your 401k. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of a 401k. The second thing you need to find out is if your 401k has both traditional and Roth. Some employers only offer a traditional 401k, meaning that your pre-tax dollars will be contributed to your 401k. If you have the Roth option, you can contribute your after-tax dollars to your 401k. And if you get an employer match, it will go to your traditional portion of your 401k unless you specifically choose to convert it to Roth. And my financial independence checklist recommends that you contribute to your 401k up to your employer match. So if my employer contributes 5%, then I'm going to contribute 5% if that's the requirement. And you can also get my financial independence checklist, including all the charts and spreadsheets I showed you earlier for absolutely free by visiting firesidechat.com slash contact. You can also check out my Fireside Chat shop to check out my books and equipment at firesidechat.com slash shopping. And the next one I would calculate is my risk tolerance. My risk tolerance is not the same as yours because of my age and my overall financial situation. You don't want to invest in something that's too risky, but at the same time, you don't want to invest in something that's too conservative and possibly lose to inflation, right? And what you'll typically see inside your 401k is stocks, bonds, and cash reserve. And if you need to figure out what your risk tolerance should be, many financial advisors recommend the rule of 110. I personally use the rule of 120, and obviously this is not in any form of financial advice. Even a licensed financial advisor can't give you specific financial advice. The rule of 120 is essentially subtracting your age by 120. So when I calculated my risk tolerance in 2017, I was 31 years old at the time. 120 minus 31 is 89. So my stocks and bonds allocation was 89% stocks and 11% bonds. To make things simple, I just chose 90% stocks and 10% bonds. And I know all of this can be confusing. So if you need help with your personal finances, like creating a budget or savings plan to achieve your financial independence, you can schedule a free one-on-one 20 minute financial coaching session by visiting fivesuchhead.com slash coaching. The 401k investment options are usually limited, ranging from conservative to more aggressive. With the IRA, you'll have thousands of funds to choose from, but your company's 401k plan limits choices, so they don't overwhelm the 401k investors. When you pull up a list of investment options, and I'm gonna pull up the Vanguard funds because that's who managed my 401k, uh, you need to make sure you're looking at several items. And I wanna know the asset class that I'm investing in. Is this mutual fund all in stocks or all in bonds? Does this mutual fund only invest in US stocks or international stocks, or maybe a combination of both? If it says balanced, how balanced is the mutual fund between stocks and bonds? This is important because I choose, if I choose the wrong uh, investment, then my 401k could either become too risky or too conservative. The goal here is to find a balance, but not necessarily a fund that says balanced. And every mutual fund comes with a risk indicator. Vanguard uses a risk scale of one to five, with one being the most conservative and five being the most aggressive. And Warren Buffett, possibly the greatest investor of all time, once said that costs really matter in investments. And what he meant was the expense ratio for the mutual fund. So if my expense ratio, like this fund right here, is over 1%, and if the fund performs a 7% return, then your net return is really 6%, right? It can make a huge difference. And I personally like a low cost index fund that is managed passively. And it means that the fund just mirrors the performances of a certain uh, index. So if I buy an S&P 500 index fund, then it mirrors the performances of the S&P 500 index. It's not trying to beat the market, it's riding with the market. And I also don't look at last year's performance and just invest in the pe uh, best performing fund from last year. I like to look at how they have performed in the past five and 10 years because the 401k investments will need to perform at the 10 year level or more. And if you're the type of person who just wants to invest and forget, there's always the target date retirement fund option. For example, if you turn 60 during the year 2050, then the 2050 life cycle fund in your 401k will uh, gradually reduce risk by changing the investments within the fund. And let's look at the uh, Vanguard Target Retirement Fund 2050 fund. 
let's say you're turning 59 and a half around the year 2050, the expense ratio is 0.08%, which is still lower than most of the actively managed mutual funds. This portfolio breaks down to 53% uh, US total stock market index fund, 37% total international index fund, 6% total bond market index fund, and 3% international bond index fund. So this is about 90% stocks and 10% bonds as of 2023. And keep in mind that the allocation of these funds will change every year. So if I go to the 2045 target retirement fund, the allocation is 86% stocks and 14% cash and bonds for the year 2023. Do you see how every year the stock allocation will decrease as the bond allocation increases? This is called a risk at reallocation every year. So when you're approaching your retirement age, like looking at the 2025 retirement fund, you will be at 56% stocks and 44% bonds. And when I started investing in 2004, I just chose the target date retirement fund um, and it was great for a beginner. And But the downside of owning a target date retirement fund is not being able to reallocate stocks and bonds on my own. The other option I had was to create a self-directed brokerage account inside my 401k. By 2018, I consider myself more of an intermediate investor, so I understood how mutual funds, ETFs, and stocks worked. My 401k at the time allowed me to move 90% of my money to the self-directed brokerage so I could invest in individual stocks, ETFs, and some other riskier investments. And I'm not by any means saying that you should do it too. If you don't know what you're doing, the best thing is to get with an advisor with your uh, 401k broker like Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab to find out what's best for you. What you need to be very careful of though is if you let them invest for you, not only are you paying more in management fees, but you're letting them control your investments. If you're not maxing out your 401k contribution, I would prioritize your savings rate over worrying about if you're going to make a 8%, 10%, or 12% return this year. I personally like to have total control of my finances, and I've been very intentional with my savings and investments. I knew, or I, I still know, where every dollar was going in and coming out. And if you want to know more about how I'm saving 70% of my income and how I start my FIRE journey, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.